हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज़ विजयन शर्मा आई एम फ्रॉम दिल्ली पब्लिक स्कूल महेंद्रगढ़ एंड दिस इज़ अ डिपार्टमेंटल डोजियर प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन एक्टिविटीज़ एंड टीचिंग मेथडोलॉजीज इन्वॉल्व फॉर टीचिंग मैथमेटिक्स इन क्लास सेवन सो लेट अस सी द एजेंडा ऑफ दिस प्रेजेंटेशन फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द विजन एंड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ अवर डिपार्टमेंट देन वी विल डिस्कस द पेडोलॉजी यूज फॉर टीचिंग एट वेरियस लेवल्स देन वी विल डिस्कस द एक्टिविटीज दैट वी हैव developed in mathematics for the students to do then we will see how the lesson plan and revision plan strategies are made and how the students are performing in mathematics in this academic year that we will see and after that we will come to know about the design of question paper how the question paper is being designed for this academic year first of all let us discuss about the vision and principle the main vision is an education system that contributes to an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all this is very important we in dps we believe service before self and providing a very high quality of education for each and every student who are in our class to promote quantitative and numerical skills to students obviously we want to enhance the quantitative aptitude and the numerical skills of the students that is required in the 21st century era as you know that this century is 21st century that is the century of information technology and everything today is in a digital form so we need to promote the quantitative and numerical skills of the students the third and the most important point is to make children learn to enjoy mathematics rather than fear it because we have seen as a teachers that most of the students fear the subject mathematics they get less marks also and they have a fear of mathematics but we as a teacher we want to make the children learn to enjoy the mathematics as a subject rather than to fear it to make children see mathematics as something to talk about to communicate through and to discuss among themselves because the more they will discuss the mathematics the more interesting it will become for the students the pedagogy use my teaching philosophy is based on pragmatism pragmatism is a problem solving approach for teaching mathematics in which we generally solve various kinds of examples and then teach the students of how to solve a particular questions so pragmatism is a problem solving approach it is based on learning by doing methodology for teaching chapters like algebra which is very important chapter in class 7 linear equations ratio and proportion chapters in class 7 we use the pedagogy that is inductive deductive approach in inductive deductive approach what we will do we will make the students to solve certain kind of questions in a particular way and then we will derive the formula or the method for solving those questions so this is a kind of inductive deductive approach where the main stress is given on solving lots of questions and examples and making the students aware of how to solve a particular kind of questions so in mathematics when the student will solve lots of questions they will have lots of practice and when they practice a lot of mathematics they generally gain confidence and they become good in mathematics for teaching subjects like geometry lines and angles triangles all this kind of things which are involving diagrammatic approach congruency which are having the diagram of the triangles and other geometric shapes we use the pedagogy that is heuristic and discovery approach because in this the students have to discover the properties of the triangles of the lines and angles or any kind of geometric figure themselves they have to visualize the figure on their notebook and they have to discover the various kinds of approaches that they are going to use for solving that question so this is called heuristic or discovery approach and it is based on van hille's model level 1 level 2 and level 3 what is van hille's model van hille was a child psychologist he discovered certain techniques for teaching mathematics that involves diagrams and geometry according to van hille's model for class 7 we generally use three levels the first level is visualization the second level is analysis and the third level is abstraction so suppose when we are teaching the students about congruency of triangles or lines and angles or any solid 3d structures the first we will do is to visualize the students of how that structure or how that diagram looks so first what we will do on the blackboard or on the whiteboard we will draw that uh, geometric figure on the board so that the students can visualize the figure properly after that the students will have to analyze like how many sides are there how many angles are there suppose the parallel lines are given then how many interior angles are there how many exterior angles are there how many alternate and corresponding angles are there 
all this kind of things has to be analyzed by the students so this is the second level that is analysis and the third level is abstraction abstraction means the students now will be able to derive the relation between the kinds of analysis they have made like corresponding angles are equal interior alternate angles are equal like this kind of uh, abstraction they can draw from the given figure also suppose we say the statement that in a parallelogram opposite sides are parallel and equal opposite angles are equal adjacent sides are supplementary all this kind of abstraction that we have been derived for a parallelogram that is how that the students will able to understand when they see the figure on the blackboard so these are the three levels of van hiller's model that is visualization analysis and abstraction these three models these three levels has to be taken care while teaching geometry to the students for teaching visualizing solids visualizing solids like cube cuboid sphere cone cylinder all these kind of things area and perimeter we use the analytical and problem solving approach because in questions involving area and perimeter we generally have to find certain kind of things like volume surface area lateral surface area curved surface area cost of painting all these kind of things we have to find out and these uh, answers or these findings or these solutions they are generally formula based so whenever a question that is formula based that comes under the category of analytical and problem solving approach so for this kind of things we need to make the students learn and memorize the formulas involving area and perimeter of various shapes and structures then only the analytical and problem solving approach can be utilized for teaching students data handling data handling means statistics mean median mode bar graph line graph histogram ogiv all this kind of things comes under the category of data handling for teaching data handling we use the project method project method means where two or three students are grouped together and they are given a particular task to solve the questions by doing the team work for example if it is said to find the mean median mode of the average height of of your class then in this kind of questions can be only solved with the help of uh, team method where we will divide the class into certain teams and each team will do their own calculation and come up to, come up with the result so for teaching data handling the best method is project method and also at the end of the session when we are to give projects to the students data handling is the chapter which is best for giving the projects because from the data handling chapters we can give them the projects like to uh, find the mean median mode of the temp uh, temperature of so i suppose this week of the month so like this they can find the average temperature mean median mode of the temperature they can find so this this chapter uses project method now there are various activities and techniques for learning by doing in mathematics various topics are there in mathematics that needs to be done with the help of learning by doing and activities few activities that we have made the students to do in this academic year are such as in the chapter visualizing solids where we have to count the number of faces vertices and edges of a given solid we can ask the students to make the solid with the help of matchsticks like this and some Uh, clay clay and matchsticks they can use to make the solids like this and with the help of this they can count their faces vertices and edges also we can make the paper cutting model we can make the paper cutting model of various 3d structures like triangular prism square based prism cube cuboid hexagonal prism pentagonal prism like this paper cutting models can be made folded and a 3d structure can be made out of it so this is a kind of activity the second activity that we have been doing that we have done the students are rotational and reflection symmetry using paper cutting as you can see in this figure as you can see in this figure there is a object made here and a mirror is placed that mirror is depicting the reflection symmetry and in this figure you can see this is the rotational symmetry because if you rotate this hexagonal structure in 60 degree then also the pattern will the object will remain the same it will maintain maintain its rotational symmetry so this kind of activity can be used to teach the students the difference between rotational and reflection symmetry the third activity that we had made the students to do is calculating the mean median mode of the marks of the entire class by the students themselves what i did in my class that after the maths unit test answer sheets were shown to the students i asked the students to calculate the mean median mode of your class of the marks that you have secured in maths so i written all the data of the marks of the students on the whiteboard and asked them to calculate 
and see what is the mean median mode coming in your class on the marks obtained by the math subject in your class so like this they found the mean median mode of the entire class by using the formula and doing the calculation in tabulation way so this was an activity one more activity is there to find the area and perimeter of our basketball court in the playground but for finding the area and perimeter we are not using any measuring tape rather we ask the students to walk on the perimeter to walk on the boundary of the basketball court the number of steps you are walking that will be the length of the boundary and the length of the boundary is the perimeter similarly for finding the area we ask them to calculate the length and breadth by walking on the length and breadth of the basketball court the number of steps they are walking that will be come as the measurement and by multiplying length and breadth we got the area of the basketball court another activity in maths in lines and angles chapter is that with the help of two protector we can calculate the corresponding angles alternate angles exterior angles and interior angles like this we can calculate between the two parallel lines so this is a very important activity for teaching the students about transversal and two parallel lines using two protectors and calculating the area sorry degree activities that we have done for the triangles chapter is by making the paper paper models of triangles and superimposing them so that we can come to know whether the two triangles are congruent or not when two paper models of a triangle superimpose on them just exactly one upon the other that means the two triangles are congruent but if the two triangles are not superimposing that means they are not congruent one more activity is there to use equilateral triangles to tessellate now what is the meaning of tessellate tessellate means a given plane surface a given plane surface can be covered with the help of equilateral triangle like this can be covered with the help of equilateral triangle like this and made a pattern now how many equilateral triangle can be made to cover this surface that we have to find so for finding this what we will do we will divide the area of the surface with the area of the triangle and like this we can find the number of triangles needed to tessellate the surface so this is a kind of activity one more activity is there to derive the formula of area of a circle that is pi r square we can derive the area of a circle pi r square by cutting the circle and arranging the cut parts in this form and further if we make more cuts then it will arrange like this and this is forming a parallelogram which is going to a rectangle and when it forms a rectangle we note that the area of rectangle is length into breadth that is pi r into r that is pi r square so like this the formula of the area of circle is coming so this activity with the help of paper cutting models we can make the students to derive the formula of area of circle in in the maths lab this activity is a very important activity to demonstrate the power of two such such as 2 raised to the power 1 2 raised to the power 2 and 2 raised to the power 3 just by folding the papers because if there is a single sheet of paper if there is a single sheet of paper and you fold it once that means 2 raised to the power 1 if you fold it twice if you fold the paper twice that means 2 raised to the power 2 so like this we can with the help of paper folding models we can calculate the power of 2 and this is a very important activity for explaining the students the concept of exponents and radicals so this is also an activity with the help of paper folding we can do now how we make the lesson plan and revision plan strategy it is very important for making the lesson plan we are using herbertian approach herbertian model Herbertian model is preferred for making the lesson plan because in Herbertian model emphasis is given to the average students of the class. So if we can make the content understood to the average student, that means the entire class will get the content. So the lesson plan is made in keeping mind the Herbertian model, which emphasizes the average student of the class. And for making the revision revision plan, we use the 5B model. 5B model is a little bit higher version of Herbertian model. the 5e means 5e is that is engage explore explain elaborate and evaluate this kind of teaching methodologies are applicable when we are teaching the content uh, second time that is during the revision where the students are aware of what is being taught so we can just brush up the topics the main points and make the students aware for the revision so 5e model is very important for the revision plan according accordingly there are accordingly 
from our textbook we have practiced all the questions but there are many questions related to ntsc and iit foundations so we have practiced some extra questions related to ntsc and iit foundations so that the students come to know about the difficulty level that they are going to face when they sit for any competitive exams related to mathematics such as ntsc olympiad all these kind of things so a few extra questions outside the textbook have been made the students to practice during their holidays by giving them worksheets so that they can uh, enhance their higher order thinking skills now this is the performance of the students in 7th a in the subject mathematics you can see there are 23 students and the marks of all the students in ut1 that is unit test 1 unit test 2 half yearly unit test 3 and unit test 4 is being displayed after doing all this data analysis we come to know that the average performance of the class that is the 7th a class in mathematics is 65 percent the average performance and if we look in the 7b students performance in 7th b for the mathematics subject we can see that there are 28 students and the average performance of the class is 70 percent it is 70 percent so we come to a conclusion that the 7th b the class 7th b this orange line is denoting the class 7th b the class 7th b is performing better than class 7th a in mathematics this we can see through the graph these are the names of the students that i have identified as average performers and they need some special attention and these are the names of the students those who are intelligent enough and they do well in their exams and they understand the concept well and uh, they are very high scorers also so these are these also these they have the potential to do more when the question paper is designed for the annual examination or for the half yearly examination we use this model in this model we can see there is knowledge comprehension application knowledge comprehension application analysis synthesis re-evaluation -evalu evaluation this is called bloom's taxonomy if we move towards the left side it is lower order thinking skills if we move towards the right side it is higher order thinking skills our paper is so designed that the average student also should pass the exam and the and the higher scorer should also face some difficult questions in their question paper so that everyone should pass but only those students will be able to score those who are good in mathematics or those who have practiced their mathematics a lot so the design of the question paper remains somewhat between application and analysis so that it is in between lower order thinking skills and higher order thinking skills every domain has got some percentage in the question paper like knowledge should be 10 percent like this all the domain has been given a very specific percentage that the question paper will have but generally we try to keep the question paper balanced that is application and analysis part is kept balanced so that higher order thinking skills and lower order thinking skills should be kept balanced in the question paper thank you this was the departmental presentation of the mathematics subject of 7th class 7th thank you